Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. We're doing a little quick and dirty prototyping today. Where and I need to cut a taper on this big old shaft of Rooney. So here's the thing. I don't have a taper cutting attachment and I need to cut a taper in this so one and a half inch mild steel round bar hot rolled. Now in cases like this, it's beautiful to have a little toy lathe like I got, but it, it's no American made hydromatic widow maker. That suits my purposes. And it's just about at the right skill level too. Now the astute amongst you will have noticed that there is a perfectly good, almost perfectly good, Emco Turn 140 CNC lathe sitting here. And it's been sitting here for the better part of two years. Why don't I use that? Well, first off, I get more than enough screen time. So for me, CNC machining and doing the CAD, it just doesn't interest me. And second words, the fuckery required to get this thing going is a little bit daunting. There's a nice and roasty toasty resistor. That was the first thing that let the smoke out when I powered it up. Who knows what's next? So, it was pretty much decided for me shortly after I bought this thing as pretty much a boat anchor and it needs to be converted over to Mach 3. I was talking to somebody who knows about these and I think the train man had the same situation where he bought an Emco turn CNC and converted it over and he had one fuck of a time and ended up giving it away. So I don't want that to happen to me, but suffice it to say the fuckery in order to get this going and get one tapered part out of it, just uh, too daunting at this stage. And this should be an interesting parts harvest to say the least. Look at all these huge electrolytic caps. I mean, just gorgeous. Look at that. And as an added bonus, all the documentation's in Deutsch. Yay. So I don't have a taper attachment here in the shop and I don't have trig tables memorized. So how are we gonna cut this taper? Or figure out what taper to cut? Well, the easy way to do it is just to go step by each and figure it out. So we want this to be a half an inch. And this is gonna be an inch and a half. So that means we got to take away an inch of material. Well, I realize that probably didn't make sense to anybody. So we got four inches and we got to cut it down by half an inch on the radius. So that's half an inch divided by four. That equals 0 0.125 every inch. Now we want the steps to be closer than that. I could go an inch and cut in 1.125, but, uh, it'd be real chunky for the taper. So I, I want to minimize that. We're going to go quarter inches. So what's a quarter of 1.25 is 30 thou right around there, right? 1.25 divided by four. Well, 12 divided by four is three, 30 thou. That's how I got there. Good enough for the girls I go out with. Now here's the beauty about being in your own shop and not constrained to having your grade 10 shop teacher look over your shoulder. Feeds and speeds? Uh, making one of them. Who cares? Whatever. Relax. If dogma is your thing, this is not the channel for you, partner. Probably uh, go check out a Roman Catholic Mass or there's lots of religions out there just dying for new converts. I used to be hooked on drugs. Now I'm hooked on the Lord. You met a few of those, I'm sure. I know I have.
I've been called a lot of dirty names, but I've never been mistaken for a machinist. But here's a little trick for you. It's the poor man's DRO. What I do is I touch off, and then I know I gotta go 30 thou. I'll just mark that where I gotta finish up. So that even if I forget or I, I lose my mind or I start thinking about boobies or whatever, I know that little mark is there and I'm, I'm aiming for that little mark. Then once I hit it, the good thing about the Sharpie is it you can erase it with the solvent in there. You just go over it again and jean Guy's your uncle. I had been doing every quarter inch, uh, taking a 30 thou cut and, and taking across, but I can do every eighth inch and just take a 15 thou cut instead of coming back because I've been taking 15 thou cuts. So I have to come back to the same spot, you know, do a cut, but I could just step it down to one eighth and then just take a 15 thou cut and not even, yeah. So that's what I'm gonna do. And that way the steps are not as steppy and it'll be easier to make the nice taper. Okay, learning by doing. Now we're gonna set up that compound angle to make it real pretty. Instead of going into the office and doing the socket toy routine of a high ballie, double neck, high baller, on the puppets went so la mathematic. So all I'm gonna do is set the angle here, and then we'll run this. Make sure the distance is the same. No crack too tight, no gap too wide. Maybe tighten that up a little bit. En tout cas, mathématique. Je m'en fous de ça, on n'a pas besoin de ça. No time, Asti, no time. Ah! How are you? Eyeballer, let's go, Asti. This Lily Putin style twisty thing is just fucking killing me. Look at that. Like a baby holding an apple. I can see now why people invest in taper attachments. My poor thumb muscle is just fucking killing. Oh. 
And here we got the problem with the baby lathe. So that there's no torque. So just trying to cut this thread and I gotta be real ginger dainty with it because otherwise uh, it stalls out even in the lowest gear and backed right off on a pulley. And just wait for two to come around on the threading indicator. Engage the half nut. There we go. So what we're going to do to get that tapered thread is we're going to do some manual CNC. I'll feed in the cross feed that wise while the lathe takes care of everything else. We're going to slow it right down because I'm not the sharpest tool in the thread. Well, there you have it. Coarse tapered threads on the lathe without a taper cutting attachment. Even a blind pig finds a truffle once in a while. Thanks a lot for... Son of a diddly. Left hand thread. No!